good morning. Cast all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. Good morning, welcome to uh, Sunday morning worship at St Mark's Kennington. It's a Sunday where we don't go to church, but the church comes to you and me. We are the church and we're here to delight in the sure promises of God. The Bible says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And we're going to begin our worship with three songs. Uh, Epi's going to lead us in singing. Uh, she's going to lead us in singing, Praise is Rising. Would you be free from your burden of sin? And uh, that wonderful song, Lead Me to the Rock, which is higher than I.
gratitude of service for Jesus your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Father, we thank you that you are indeed that rock which is greater, which is stronger, which is higher than we are. Lord God, sometimes we feel at the end of our tether, uh, we run out of our own resources, our own strength, our own wisdom, and we lean on you. We come to you this morning and we put our trust in that rock, our sure hope in a world of uncertainty. We thank you, Lord God, that we can have the assurance that you're with us, that you hear our prayers. Lord God, receive our praise this morning. Open our hearts and minds and lives to receive all that you want to do right where we are now in Jesus name. Amen. Well, welcome again. Uh, if you were with us last week on our online service, you'll remember that we went global. We heard directly from Emma Camp in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Emma, if you're listening again, greetings to you in Goma. But now we're going to a different continent. We're going to Nepal. Uh, member of our church, Samuel John, uh, went uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, to work in Nepal. Uh, he's been backwards and forwards there over the last few years. He's working with a church there. He's working in a plastics recycling uh, firm. Uh, we are part of the World Church and we want to hear from Samuel. He's going to give us a greeting. Uh, so we're going to go live to Nepal. And then after that, we're going to go straight into a song, uh, which is a very appropriate song. It just says, uh, God's got the whole world in his hand. He's got each of us here. He's got all the different parts of the world that we're thinking about. It's part of the world where we are concerned for. Uh, there's our neighbours, our community, and we say, God has got the whole world. He's got each one of us, you and me, brother, you and me, sister, in his hand. And this song is a remarkable song that is going to be sung by, I think, five different households. Uh, so let's hear from Samuel, and then we'll go straight into this special treat. Uh, I think it's Jeremiah who will kick us off uh, into that song. He's got the whole world in his hand. Samuel, over to you, then Jeremiah and friends. Hello, St Mark's Church family. Um, greetings from Nepal. I wanted to send you a small encouragement. Um, we're also here in quarantine for 21 days until the 12th of April, trying to stop the spread of um, coronavirus in the country where there are now cases as well. Um, the encouragement that I've had recently is from Hebrews 10 that says, don't stop meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let's continue to meet together and do so all the more, especially as we see the day approaching. And I think it's really important that we make the most of being able to meet together, especially virtually, uh, like is um, happening a lot at the moment, um, to encourage one another, to not get in bad habits or in the habit of not meeting together or not encouraging each other, 
but actually to be in the habit of encouraging each other and the habit of meeting together, even if we can't in person, but virtually. So here's my encouragement from Nepal and sending you much love to you all. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. Thank you. Uh, great to hear from Samuel in Nepal. And thank you for the song. Uh, Jeremiah, Amelie, Emma, Holly and Freya. He's got each one of us in his hand. He knows exactly what's going on in our lives, our homes, our families. He holds us in the palm of his hand. He knows today and he knows the future. Now, over the last uh, few days, uh, we've heard a lot of people on the news, on the television, uh, talking about crises in the past. And uh, a lot of people have likened the present situation to wartime. And those of you who are older will remember uh, the man who led uh, Britain through the Second World War, Winston Churchill, was renowned for his uh, speeches, his motivational messages. Um, and we've got someone in our church who would like to give us a very short message in the style of Winston Churchill. Let's hear in the landing grounds, on the fields, and on the beaches. But we will never, never surrender. That's fantastic, Alan. Let's um, let's hear that again. Alan, do it again. In the landing grounds, on the fields, and on the beaches. But we will never, never surrender. Thank you, Alan. Uh, that was great. The resemblance to the original is uncanny. Uh, now it's time for us to turn to the Bible. And uh, if you've been at St. Mark's over the last few Sundays, uh, you'll know that we've been going through the Gospel of Luke, Dr. Luke, the writer who presents a picture of Jesus to us. And we've been following through exactly how Luke portrays him. And we're going to read today from Luke chapter 7, verse 36 onwards. And I'm going to ask Caroline to read this. And as you'll know, when you ask Caroline to do something, uh, she'll do it very creatively. Uh, Caroline, lead us, if you would, through the Bible reading today. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to tell you a story today from Luke chapter 7, um, starting at verse 36. Once, Jesus was having dinner in the house of a Pharisee. It's a Pharisee. This is Jesus. The Pharisee's name was Simon. I'm not sure why Simon had invited Jesus to dinner. We never quite get to find out, in a way. Um, but he'd got all of his friends there, um, a very respectable crowd of people, people who, like him, were very willing to uphold the law, make sure that they were as close to God as they possibly could be by being practically perfect and doing everything to the letter. Maybe Simon had invited Jesus round so that he could ask him some awkward questions and trick him. I don't know. But you see, the Pharisees were also very good at what we've come to understand as social distancing. They didn't want anyone too near them who was going to break the rules. They weren't worried about a virus, but they were worried about the bad reputation of people who just weren't as worthy as them rubbing off. And so they kept the sinners at a good distance from them and tried to remind them of how they should be living. 
One such sinner lived in the village. She was a woman with quite an interesting past. She'd done all sorts of things that she shouldn't have and everybody knew it. Suddenly, who should burst into Simon's dinner party but the woman? She ran in. She lay down at Jesus' feet and she cried and cried and cried. She cried so much that her tears soaked Jesus' feet and she had to let down her hair and wipe Jesus' feet with it. She'd also brought with her a bottle of very expensive perfume and she proceeded to tip the whole lot out over Jesus' feet. You could have heard a pin drop. No one quite knew what to make of it. Simon was flabbergasted and very embarrassed. He and all of his dinner party guests recoiled, trying to keep a safe distance between themselves and the sinner who'd suddenly entered their presence. What a scene! Whatever was she trying to do? And why wasn't Jesus stopping her? Surely, if he was any kind of a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman she was. But Jesus didn't stop her. Jesus understood that she was trying to show him how much she loved him. Simon was standing there with his mouth wide open, not knowing what to make of the whole thing. And so Jesus decided to help him out. And he told him a story. I want you to imagine two people who owe someone else money. One of them owes 500 coins, the other one only owes 50. The rich man who loaned them the money knows that neither of them can pay back what they borrowed. So he says, don't worry about it, you don't owe me anything. Which one do you think will like the rich man more? I suppose the one who owed him more, said Simon, slightly puzzled. What did that have to do with the soggy-haired, smelly-perfumed woman? Have you seen this woman? Jesus asked Simon. Of course I've seen her, thought Simon. She's poured perfume all over the floor and ruined our dinner party. This woman, continued Jesus, washed my feet with her tears. She's not stopped kissing them and she's poured perfume all over me that she could barely afford. You didn't give me any water to wash my feet with when I arrived. You didn't kiss me and tell me I was welcome. You didn't even put olive oil on my head. This woman has done all sorts of things against God. But I'm telling you now, she is forgiven, and that's why she has shown how much she loves me. Jesus turned to the woman and looked her in the eye. Your sins are forgiven, he said. Your faith has saved you, and God has so much goodness to give you. Simon and the others thought Jesus was absolutely outrageous. He can't just go around saying people are forgiven, they muttered. Who does he think he is? Who did he think he was indeed? You see, Jesus was the Son of God. And if anyone had a right to be socially distancing himself from sinners, all of them, not just the woman, the people who owed 50 coins in the story, as much as the people who owed 500, it was Jesus. Jesus could have stood back from all of them and said, no, I'm perfect and I'm not coming into your sinful presence. But he didn't. He drew near. And he offered the woman what she desired most in the world, freedom and closeness with God. I wonder what happened to Simon. We're not told. We're told the woman's story, but we're not given the story of what happens next to Simon. I wonder if he got the message. I wonder if he decided to draw close to God in the end by inviting God to forgive him too. And I wonder what we do when we see that like the woman had poured out all she had at the feet of Jesus, Jesus pours out all that he has for us on the cross. How do we respond? Do we respond with gratitude to God and pour that out on other people? Or do we recoil? We're going to respond to that story in a moment um, with a prayer. So if while you are waiting for that, you could gather a few things that would be really helpful. Could you find a piece of A4 paper or any size, a pen, any colour, and some perfume. It doesn't have to be Chanel, it could be anything you can find, body spray, deodorant even, something that smells nice. Go and find something from your mum's bedroom if you need to. Thank you. Mum's bedroom if you need to. Thank you, Caroline. Okay, some of you are off to look for those uh, three Ps, uh, paper, pen, and perfume. Uh, now we're gonna spend a little uh, short time uh, just thinking about some of the ministry that God has led, led us into as a church. Um, for a number of years now, we've been working with Christians Against Poverty, CAP, 
in seeking to come alongside people who are struggling financially, particularly those struggling uh, through debt. Um, and we come alongside, we work with CAP, and we give them some advice, some help to see how they can come out of debt. Now, we are aware in the present challenges, uh, a lot of people's financial situations are getting much worse. So we need to continue to particularly pray to those who are already struggling through debt, for those for whom life was uh, already tight uh, before this present crisis with all its challenges. Uh, I'd love you now just to hear from Cherie. Uh, Cherie is our CAP Debt Centre Manager, and she's just going to tell us um, a little bit about her work and give us a quick update. Hi there, I'm Shiri Thomas and I'm the Debt Centre Manager for Christians Against Poverty um, at St Mark's Kennington. So, just want to say well done for um, staying safe, keeping isolated and protecting yourself and your loved ones um, from COVID-19. It is unprecedented times, it is uncertain times. We don't know how long we're going to have to do this for, but until we meet again, I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, as you remember, I became the debt centre manager um, when I took over from John last year. Um, and since then, uh, Christians Against Poverty actually went into a, a time to breathe. And it, again, that was uncertain times and we didn't know um, quite how long that was going to last. We didn't know if we were supposed to be doing business as usual. But we came out of our time to breathe. At our centre, uh, in overall, we actually slowed down work. We didn't actually stop completely. But I'm glad to report that we're back at full capacity now. And it seems that COVID-19 has brought a national time to breathe, as it were. So in this time, I'd just like to encourage you um, to continue praying for us, myself and the clients um, and the befrienders, because we are still working. Um, I am still keeping in contact with clients or be electronically and by the phone. Um, and our head office in Bradford has actually moved from working in-house to at home. So while they're doing that transition, and please pray that it will go smoothly and in the next couple of weeks we'll have the full team on board so we all can work safely from home. Um, but just to let you know that we have had um, more than four people go debt-free so far. Um, I am I'm yet to meet um, some more that we've had to go debt free and hopefully when we do get back together I will be able to have one particular client that both I and uh, John my predecessor um, both worked with um, to come and give her testimony of what it was like to go through the journey with CAP but in the meantime I just want to encourage you to share your faith in a new and creative way to be bold and courageous um, and to just stay safe because remember that our promises are in the word of God and our faith is in Jesus Christ so as long as we trust in him and completely hold on to those promises we will come through this on the other side we will be bolder we will be stronger and more confident in our faith and very very creative for doing so so stay isolated stay hydrated Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you, Cherie. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work Cherie leads us in, uh, in coming alongside people in debt. We pray for those who are really struggling at the moment, those who are facing financial problems, maybe through loss of employment, or those in business who are facing loss of income, Pray for those who are anxious at this time. Pray, Lord God, that uh, you would be the one who enables them to know that you love them, you care for them, and that you can provide for them. Father, we thank you for all those we have come into contact with where we've been able to give some encouragement in the face of debt. We pray that they might have the joy of going debt-free and discovering the love of God in a new and deep way. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a piece of music now. Uh, it's the words of the song are, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Um, we're going to have uh, it played on the violin. Uh, Alice is going to play it. And uh, it's really just to maybe reflect on the words, uh, reflect on what God is saying to us. Um, and then we are going to have it played a second time. 
and uh, Epi is going to lead us in singing. Uh, Alistair and Epi are in different houses, different places, but by the wonders of technology, uh, we join them together, and uh, you're invited to join in with Epi. And uh, in this one, we've uh, understood how to put the, the subtitles on, so uh, let's reflect together on the wondrous story uh, of which we could sing now. Alistair and uh, Epi, uh, what a wonderful song, uh, just to be able to remember what God has done for us through Jesus. And also uh, there was a line in that first uh, verse which says, uh, we sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea, as well as worshipping with one another through uh, this YouTube channel, as well as knowing we're in fellowship with uh, Emma in DRC, Samuel in Nepal, we're also worshipping God with those who've gone before, those who are worshipping him face to face in heaven. Now, one of the good things about doing church like this is um, we get to see what goes on in the children's groups. Uh, we've heard from Caroline uh, speaking to the children, uh, but also normally the youth go out. They go downstairs to the crypt. Leandra takes them down there, but we, we've no idea uh, how she communicates with them, what they talk about. Um, but we're going to hear from Leandra and I think Joshua as well. And so we get to uh, hear Leandra, our youth workers message to the youth, which is for all of us. Leandra, Joshua, over to you. Hi guys, it's Leandra here. And Joshua. Um, just quickly wanted to um, keep in touch with you guys and um, how we have been coping with um, the lockdown. Uh, it's been a week and the last two days I was feeling quite overwhelmed. And uh, if you're like, if you're someone like that likes planning and having things organised, kind of dawned on me like two days ago that we were going to have to like cancel some of our trips that we planned months ago. Um, and then if you're really a fan as well of Easter, um, I mean, I'm going to really miss um, Easter's like my favourite time. And we have like the dawn service and, you know, all these things that I really look forward to in a year. Um, it's all cancelled so I was quite overwhelmed but then what I kind of remembered because obviously we have the time as well to just think and reflect and things I was reflecting on like past experiences which um, I then had to think how I was dealing with it at that time um, and at that time I was dealing with it by actually clinging on to Jesus I used to um, make myself um almost like a um like the presence of god being there me asking god um hold me and um take me through the difficult times that's how i used to deal with it um and that kind of made me um give me that sort of peace in my heart um and also there was a a, a poem of a youth working chipstead um which um, I Josh is going to read to us. Um, that was great, encouraging to me 
um, two days ago um, when, you know, I started to feel quite overwhelmed. Lockdown is a time to listen to God's voice and reflect. Obey his word and his teachings. Call on Jesus' name and be calm. Know what is the purpose of all of this. Dwell in his presence. Do not panic. Offer a prayer for everyone's safety. Wait and be patient. This shall pass over. Mature our personal relationship with him. Um, thank you, Josh. And that that's, that's what it is. I love the, the last um, two. You know, wait and be patient. This shall pass. Um, that's a great encouragement, I think, throughout the Bible. Um, you know, nothing is permanent apart, you know, for eternity. And um, to nurture our relationship with God, this is the right um, time for us to be still and really just ask for God's presence and ask for his wisdom and for his peace. Um, so stay safe, um, you know, stay at home, stay safe. Um, again, be part of the so many challenges out there, isn't it, Josh? I've actually um, done so many already. Uh, Josh has inspired me with, um, you know, staying at home and stay home challenges. So um, stay safe, you know, be part of the stay at home challenge. God bless you. God bless you too, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, great hair, by the way, uh, Joshua, that is. Um, OK, now Caroline is back. And she's going to lead us in uh, some creative prayer. Hopefully you managed to find some uh, paper, a pen and some perfume. I think she said from your mother's cupboard, maybe your father's, who knows. Uh, Caroline, lead us, if you would, in prayer. Right, I'm back. I hope you've got everything. You've got a piece of paper, a pen and something that smells nice, some perfume or something like that. Um, what I'd like to do is to take a sock off or a shoe if you're wearing one and um, draw around your foot. You can do this as a household if you like and just draw around one person's foot. It's up to you. And you can cut it out if you want to, but I'm not going to try and do that for you on screen. Just draw around your foot so you've got a nice outline. And then I'd like you to have a think about anything that you might have done, maybe during the last few days, the last week, that could separate you. From God, what could he decide to socially distance himself from you because of, if he chose to? I'm going to write down that I've been a bit impatient sometimes. I have sometimes even got cross. And I've quite often been selfish, thinking about all the things that I'm missing out on, rather than focusing on other people and the situations that they're in. Now, God's perfect. God is never impatient, he's never cross, he's never selfish. He could choose not to be my friend because of those things, but he doesn't. Jesus pours out all of his love for me on the cross and he covers all of those things that I've done wrong with the fragrance of his generous love. It's extravagant, but he did it for me. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you that you pour out everything for us. Please help us to humble ourselves, to realise that we need you, and to be willing to accept that gift that you freely offer, and to offer you all that we have in return. Amen. Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, maybe your room, maybe your house, your flat is now smelling fragrantly uh, as a result of that prayer exercise. Um, Caroline said, uh, the Lord Jesus poured himself out for us. Uh, we read that story of the woman who poured out her perfume on Jesus' feet, but Jesus himself poured out his life for us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2 says, uh, Live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Uh, that's what God has done for us through Jesus. And we're invited also to be a fragrant offering in the way we live our lives with one another, starting primarily today and this week with our household, how we treat uh, those we are close to. We're limited into uh, how many people we can have contact with this week. But let's start uh, at home. Let's start with uh, those around us. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 says, We are to God the aroma of Christ. And if you've ever thought about that, uh, we can make a good difference. We can cheer people. We can encourage people. Um, and we have a chance to do that. Let's be faithful in prayer for our community, for those in need, uh, for those around the world, uh, for those places we're connected with as a church. Uh, 
Chris Samuel in Nepal. Uh, even in the making of this uh, program, I've had a couple of text messages from friends in Uganda. If you've managed to agree to, uh, to get onto the YouTube channel, uh, Deborah and family, we send you our, our greetings too. And let's be faithful in prayer for the world near and far in these days of challenge. Let's continue just to cast our cares upon the Lord, cast our anxieties on God, knowing that he cares for us. Uh, thank you to all those who've been part of this program. We've got one final song. I think there's been about 15, 16 people uh, whose faces you will have seen uh, in the making of this Sunday morning service. Uh, Penny and Mitch are gonna lead us in our final song, which is a great song which says, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We're forced to be waiting. We're forced to be uh, waiting on God. Uh, we are sometimes impatient, but let's wait on God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Hello, St Mark's. You've got Penn and Mitch here, and uh, we're going to play Strength Will Rise.
strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Thank you for being with me uh, this Sunday morning. It's been a real delight to be with you. Uh, we will continue to seek to put a daily dose of encouragement, a song, a thought, a prayer, uh, some uh, words to share. Feel free to send me a clip and be, I'll be glad to seek to edit it and incorporate it into our church YouTube channel. Uh, so there will be something coming out most mornings as far as we can manage. And uh, many of you joined us for our live event. Uh, we had a live phone in and discussion uh, on Friday, and we're going to do it again this Friday, five o'clock. Uh, join in Friday, five o'clock. Uh, we met together for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. I think you can go back and see the live show. It's not quite the same as being there, but uh, do make a note. Friday, five o'clock. I'll be glad to uh, be in your living rooms uh, again. May God bless you. Let's finish with a final prayer. Father, thank you that we can worship you together, uh, even though we're in separated places. Uh, thank you that uh, your ear is attentive to our prayers. Uh, you see, you know the situation each one of us is going through. So again, we just cast our cares into your hands, knowing your presence, knowing your peace. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you, upon all those whom you love, upon your homes and families, upon our community, our neighbourhood, our country and our world, now and forever. Amen.